Given the, uh, the mainstream media reports on the demise of the conservative movement as a result of Republican losses last fall, uh, that liberals would do well to come here and they might see that they've posted the obituary just a tad early. This is a record turnout for CPAC, more people than ever, and I think that is a measure of people's enthusiasm and willingness to be involved. They're starting to see at the beginning of the Obama administration that the country is headed in worrisome and concerning ways. This is going to be probably the largest conference we've had in history. Uh, people from all over the country are coming in, especially take a look at all the young people here, which is very encouraging to me. We've got a lot of work to do, but in some ways, um, you know, it can be liberating to be in the minority. Um, you don't have any responsibility to govern. Uh, you can return to first principles, which I think we needed to do. The Republicans decided it was more important to maintain power than to maintain principle. <clears throat> and when you start to choose that, the American people see it. And you walk away from the very principles that you say you espouse, because you're more interested in power than you are freedom. And now it's an opportunity for us to go back to the basics, see what we've done wrong, and try to rebuild for the future. I'm here to talk about not only just my book, but to talk about conservative principle and the difference between uh, conservative principles and conservative policy. There's a very distinct difference. If you don't have a principle base, your policies don't mean anything. They're just your own going by the seat of your pants ideas. I talked to a number of Republican congressmen before the vote on the first so-called stimulus package. And I said the last thing that you should do is vote against this for partisan reasons. If you think this will work, you owe it to your constituents, you owe it to the country to vote with the president. Of course, then you ought to take up knitting, because what you'll have to do to do that is admit to yourself, at least, that everything you believe is wrong. Well, everything we believe isn't wrong. The stimulus bill reflected a, a worldview of the Obama administration and the Democrat majority that believes that government is the answer. The only way to get out of trouble is to encourage the private sector to grow, is to, is to see a, a, a rejuvenation of the entrepreneurial sector of America. Uh, stimulating government is not going to get America out of the challenges we have, and so the ideas of, of those that understand how the economy works, conservatives, those ideas are needed now as never before. The American people know we can't borrow and spend and bail our way back to a growing America. We know we can't bail out every failing business in this country, every failing mortgage that what we've got to get back to are those core principles of free market economics, give the American people more of their tax dollars to spend, and then bring about real fiscal discipline in Washington, D.C. That's what will get the economy growing again. Let's go back to the fundamentals that caused the problem in the economy and fix that. Let's you know, fix the mark to market rules. Let's uh, shore up the, the uh, value of the dollar. Let's uh, reform our taxes by lowering them. Let's renew our regulations by making them more comfortable for businesses and so that we're welcoming capital. The free market system works. Let's create an environment where businesses can compete here and compete against the rest of the world and grow our economy. Well, particularly to the young people here, they're the future of this movement. And so their energy, their enthusiasm, their passion, their desire to try to be part of this is really important. The college kids have heard entirely one side. In most colleges, in most classrooms, uh, you've got faculty members who've never been out uh, in, the, in the business sector, haven't had jobs in the business world, don't understand why jobs come, why they go away. Uh, you're going to have to talk to kids about what it is that makes the economy grow, why America is the most powerful nation on earth. They grew up in this powerful land and think it's always been this way. It hasn't always been this way. It doesn't always have to be this way. And I went back for my junior year of college at the University of Virginia, sought out an environment like what I had found in D.C., smart, conservative women. And to my surprise, all the women's organizations were more liberal. And in fact, I went to our women's center, asked them if they co-sponsor a group for conservative women, and they laughed at me. So that's when I decided, hey, I'll just start my own group. So I started the Network of Enlightened Women, or NEW, and we're a book club for culturally conservative women on college campuses. We've got to get with the 21st century. We got out-hustled on the internet and in the blogosphere by the left in 08. We can't ever let it happen again. We have to use the new technologies that are available to us to communicate with young leaders. And what you guys are doing is going to be a great help to basically help teach people how to use it, explain it. In many ways, people say, why and how should I use this? How did this really help? But if we build a network of believers, it makes a difference. I just hope people know what effect it has when thousands of people send emails and make calls to offices. What we re need right now is just people to say, stop spending money. Congratulations to you for, for doing this, for, uh, for being out there, being involved. 
Uh, I talked about the importance of having the three-legged stool of economic conservatives, social conservatives, and, and foreign policy conservatives. And that's a winning combination, and we need groups out there who are going to go out and deliver that message. This is a time when I think opinion is fluid. I think we saw that in last year's campaign. We see that in the special election results where there's a big drop off of Democratic turnout. It's fragmentary evidence, but it's, it's there. Uh, and we see it when we look at uh, polling on the bailout package, uh, the, uh, the stimulus package. You get approval ratings that go from 38% in one poll to 62% in another, depending on the wording. That signals to me that voters don't have deep-rooted preferences. It's not something they've thought about for a long time. It's not something which they've clearly made up their mind. And how you frame issues is important. The left has been brilliant, really, in the way that they've been able to connect these uh, various organizations into a sort of a common front, creating hundreds of 501c3s and 527s, coordinating their efforts. We have to do the same thing. Because we're not going to hear it on MSNBC. We're not going to hear it on ABC. We're not going to hear it on CNN. We've got to hear it from clear voices out here in the future. So thank you for what you're doing. Thanks for carrying the message about freedom. Because freedom, free markets, work. Not just to say no to what Barack Obama is uh, proposing, but to say yes to our own plan with regards to health care, education, to energy, to the environment. We, we have the right way forward for America. And, uh, and, and our way is a very different way than the one that's being proposed by the most liberal members of Congress. I'm excited about what you guys are doing. I want to encourage you. I'm going to come and try to help you with a fundraiser. I'm going to try to do everything I can to encourage groups just like this. Give them money. <laughs> Thanks, Congressman. Thank you. Great having you.